Welcome to Newsroom. I am your host, Mr. Khalid Bhatt. Today is the 5th of October, 2023, and these are the stories that we'll try to decipher, understand, and describe during the course of the show. We'll begin, ladies and gentlemen, with the uh, update as far as uh, the decision that has been taken by the uh, caretaker government to expel all the illegal uh, aliens who are currently present in Pakistan by the 1st of November. As you can see on the side of our screens, the, the number of days left are also being flashed continuously. 26 days are left now till uh, the uh, expulsion of all such illegal aliens that are present in uh, Pakistan. Uh, the action against uh, the illegal immigrants is continuing uh, indiscriminately. Over 700 foreign nationals have been detained in Quetta. And of course, the biggest repatriation operation plan is ready as far as the official statements are concerned. Also, Foreign Minister Jalil uh, Jilani Saab met with uh, the uh, Interim Foreign Minister of Afghanistan, Mr. Amir Muttaki, in Tibet, China, uh, and of course, he discussed the relations between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Also, Afghan guards have, uh, have killed two innocent Pakistanis at the Chaman border. This happened due to the firing of the Afghan guards. This is and more is going to be discussed in the first segment as part of this a very important decision that has been taken by the caretaker government in the wake of different issues that are uh, that uh, Pakistan is encountering, whether it be on the economic front or on the security front. Our second story, ladies and gentlemen, concerns Palestine, Israel, and the Israeli sector, uh, settlers who have stormed Al-Aqsa Mosque, a complex around 3,000 116 settlers entered the Al-Aqsa complex. Two Palestinians were killed by the Israeli forces. 30 Palestinians have been killed as far as the estimates are concerned since the beginning of 2023. Not only the Muslims but also Christians are facing the harassment and intimidation by the Israelis. This is our second story. And our third story concerns the World Teachers Day, ladies and gentlemen, that is being celebrated today across uh, uh, Pakistan. Uh, teachers are, of course, every uh, generation's uh, uh, superheroes or every generation's light. These are the people who guide the next generation to the right path, who give them the right guidelines. Uh, as far as teachers are concerned, a lot of different initiatives have been taken. More needs to be done. We'll discuss that in our third story. Then uh, two Nobel uh, Prizes, uh, first in chemistry that has been given to uh, Mungi, Bewindi, Louis Bruce and Alexei Akimov. Uh, the Nobel Prize has been given on discovery and synthesis of quantum dots and the Nobel Prize in literature has also been awarded to Norwegian author uh, John Fosse uh, and of course uh, his uh, name has become extremely important in the current uh, wake of the new phase of literature. So congratulations to, to all of them and finally we'll be talking about uh, climate change in the wake of the fact that 2023 has been declared the hottest year in the world, climate, as we know, is imploding faster uh, than uh, estimated, whether it be the heat waves, whether it be the form of different tornadoes or floods or uh, other uh, issues that are, uh, you know, uh, attacked or, you know, uh, that are being confronted by the world over, whether it be Pakistan, whether it be in other countries across the world, even in the United States of America. No country is spared. Climate change is something that needs to be tackled with and urgently. This is going to be our last story. Let's begin with our first, and that concerns what is happening as far as Pakistan's uh, uh, decision to expel all the illegal immigrants, illegal aliens is concerned by the 1st of November. This huge operation is uh, all uh, ready and of course the uh, different uh, phases of this operation are going on as we speak. The actions against the illegal immigrants are uh, moving on uh, uh, indiscriminately as well. 700 foreign nationals have been detained in Quetta just to give you an example to discuss different aspects of this decision that has been taken in the wake of different uh, problems that Pakistan has been encountering on the uh, security front, on the economic front, on the diplomatic front. We've been joined by Hassan Khan. He's an expert in Afghan affairs. Hassan, thank you very much to have uh, joined us on this important issue. You understand Afghan affairs like no one else. This ultimatum, Hassan, that has been given uh, to uh, the uh, uh, undocumented uh, immigrants or illegal aliens, particularly Afghans, uh, by the uh, Federal Apex uh, Committee, how do you see this? How important is it in the current context of what Pakistan is facing? Uh, thank you, uh, sir. I think this is a very uh, crucial decision. Uh, everybody knew that uh, Pakistan has graciously hosted the Afghan refugees for almost uh, 50 years. Uh, so I think uh, now is the time, uh, and you know Pakistan has a lot of its own uh, problem, particularly uh, the economic problem, uh, particularly 
uh, the, the the security issues and uh, in a number of uh, uh, security uh, uh, terrorist attacks, particularly after the takeover of uh, the Taliban, uh, the establishment of Marat Islami in Kabul, the the, the number of uh, terrorist attacks on uh, Pakistan, uh, Pakistani side, Pakistani security people, and security establishment has phenomenally increased. Uh, Pakistan has taken up this issue time and again. Uh, with the Kabul administration, but unfortunately, their response was not that professional, uh, uh, which which we were expecting. So I think Pakistan now has decided that it's the time to put our own house in order. Uh, Pakistan has now decided that we need to focus uh, on our own home, uh, and it is better to take care of the Pakistanis first. So I think that this decision has been taken. We. Uh, uh, I, I think we hosted the Afghans, as I said, for five decades, and, uh, and there was a lot of brotherly relations. I think no major incident happened uh, with the refugees. The Afghans were allowed to travel uh, from Chitral to Karachi. Uh, nobody stopped them anywhere. They were free in doing business. Uh, they were free in uh, transportation, etc. So now I think Pakistan's uh, the, 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 the government uh, the people of Pakistan, are the, the, the decision makers, uh, they have now figured that it is the time uh, that Afghan refugees shall go back home because their country is not now in a, uh, in a fairly secure, the environment, the security has been improved in, uh, in, in Afghanistan. So I think this is a very timely decision uh, and uh, I hope uh, that it will be implemented in a letter and spirit Maybe I'm not talking of the deadline, the deadline uh, which is October first. It can be extended because the number of illegal, the number of unregistered, uh, unregistered refugees, it is crossing three million. So sending back three million people, and especially those uh, who stayed in Pakistan for for 50 years, for 40 years, for 30 years, it is a phenomenal task. It is a big challenge. Uh, however. Uh, with with sustained uh, approach and uh, with continued uh, continuity in policy, I think we can achieve this target. Uh, we can send not only the other illegal immigrants, uh, but Afghan immigrants, are the Afghan, especially those who are in Pakistan without having any documents. So I think they can be sent back. And I hope uh, uh, the Kabul administration or the Amarat Islami will definitely cooperate because the, the the reason is that uh, Afghan's uh, national in Pakistan, now is the time for them to go back and participate in the development uh, of their own country. Because Afghanistan can be developed by Afghans. If Afghans are going around in the world and are not going back, whether it is Afghan businessmen, whether it is Afghan industrialist, whether it is Afghan engineers, the doctor. So I think the Afghans need them. And it's a very timely decision of Pakistan send them back, uh, take, participate in the development of your own country. Hassan, I'd like to understand something, and I'd like your perspective on it. When you uh, look or hear the statement by Safaraz Bukti Sahib, who's our uh, uh, interim interior minister, and he states a number of incidents, terror incidents, in which Afghan nationals have, it has been proven that they have been instrumental or part of those incidents. When you look at the way TTP has been operating from the Afghan soil into Pakistan, also ISKP, uh, the example of which was the attack on uh, jamaat uh, jamaat islamic Fadl rahman group, this and so much more that is happening, despite the fact that Pakistan was the country that housed the same migrants for decades with the open arms and welcomed them like their brothers, what went wrong from the Afghan side? Why did the Afghan side start to destabilize Pakistan? I think Pakistan's major concern is not uh, with the Afghans, uh, with the government of Afghanistan. Pakistan's major concern uh, is the terrorists. It's, just, it's a very small number of people compared to the population of Pakistan, compared to the population of Afghanistan. It's a very small number of people, and I think they are jeopardizing peace, uh, tranquility, development of the entire region. So what Pakistan's point is, Pakistan wants its counterpart in Kabul to take action against those people who are using the Afghan side 
against a brotherly country, against a country which has graciously hosted millions of Afghans for almost 50 years, for five decades. So I think it is the time now for Kabul administration to return uh, that uh, the, the, the goodies which Pakistan has done to the Afghan. So instead of cooperating in nabbing the, the small number of terrorists, maybe Pakistani, or maybe the Afghans, or maybe of other, of other nationalities who are using the Afghan side against Pakistan. And this, this is not an accusation because the UN has reported that various terror syndicates in Afghanistan, they are, they are getting, uh, they are sending there, they are using the Afghan side. And then particularly the UN and the US reports, they pointed uh, toward the TTP, the TTP is turning out to be a biggest threat in the region, specifically for Pakistan, because after the takeover of Amarat Islami, uh, of establishment of Amarat Islami in Kabul, the number of terrorist attacks on Pakistan, Pakistani side, the people of Pakistan, security people, uh, law enforcement agencies, it has increased any fold. So Pakistan has time and again asked, tested, approached uh, Amarat Islami uh, leadership to cooperate in it, stop them using the Afghan side. But unfortunately, they didn't take it, they, they didn't cooperate. So, uh, they didn't cooperate. So I think Pakistan now major focus is to control the activities of the terrorist outfit, uh, particularly the TT, maybe the ISKP, because ISKP is also involved in terrorist attack in Pakistan. So I think that is the major focus of Pakistan. That is the major aim of Pakistan. And Pakistan wants its, uh, its, uh, its uh, the, the, the friends in Kabul, especially Taliban, to definitely, I will call them the friends of Pakistan, because they use the Pakistani side. Their families were here. Uh, they, 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 they get medical attention, they get education facilities, their kids. When they were fighting against uh, uh, the, 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 the former regime uh, in Afghanistan, so I think Pakistan's definitely in a position and in a better position to seek cooperation for Amarat Amar Islami. But unfortunately, the way they are responding, that's very unfair. Hassan, uh, I'd, I'd also like to understand, you, you said that the major you know, concern from Pakistan is uh, terrorism, is security, but there's also another concern, and that is the economic concern, whether it be the illegal trade that has been going on uh, under the garb of the Afghan transit trade, whether it be other forms of uh, uh, black money that has been transferred to Afghanistan through various means, and a lot of uh, measures that have been taken under the current uh, caretaker government to uh, stop this uh, uh, to a large extent. That I also feel is one of the major causes uh, because a lot of uh, the current uh, you, you know, uh, diaspora that is present in uh, Pakistan is said to be uh, behind it or directly or indirectly responsible for it. When you look at the, the whole uh, you know, uh, strata of uh, issues that concerns Pakistan of which you highlighted uh, the security to be uh, the most important, how do you see the reaction from the Afghan side when it has been announced that uh, November 1st is the deadline for the expatriation or the expansion of all the illegally uh, present uh, aliens or immigrants. We know the reaction that came from Sabihullah Mujahid, and I'll quote what he said. He said, uh, this uh, Pakistan decision was unacceptable and urged authorities to revisit the policy. Is there, a, I mean, will they eventually accept it? Will they be forced to accept it? I think, uh, uh, yes, as far I understand your questions, uh, you're asking about the, the reaction uh, of the, uh, the, the, the Amarat Islami uh, leadership. I think it is quite unfortunate, and I will definitely use the word quite undiplomatic uh, from Kabul, <coughs> especially the statement of this person, uh, Zabihullah Mujahid, and then the statement of uh, Yaqub uh, Umari, uh, who is the defense minister. Uh, the way uh, 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 Mr. Mujahid uh, has stated on his social media uh, X accounts, uh, saying that uh, first he said that this decision is not acceptable to the Afghans, one, and two, he said Pakistan must allow uh, the, the, the Afghans to live in Pakistan <coughs> till the time uh, they want, until that it, it will be on their desire 
when they want to return to Pakistan. So I think Pakistan is not a free land. Uh, Pakistan, uh, it, it, it's a country, it has laws, uh, it can't allow every, every person just to enter and say, are his uh, sweet well. So I think uh, if Afghans want to enter Pakistan, they must follow the, the law of the land. Uh, and then the, the, the statement of Mullah Yaqub, uh, for me, that was quite astonishing uh, when he said that uh, Pakistan's behavior with the Afghan refugees the national uh, is, is, uh, is very cruel and is very honest. I think he is, is, uh, he is forgetting the way people of Pakistan graciously hosted five millions at a time. In three millions now, Afghan refugees five decades. Uh, I think uh, without without letting them uh, any problem, they were using the Pakistanis hospital as Pakistanis. They were using the Pakistani educational facilities, the Pakistani infrastructures. They were doing all kinds of businesses without paying a single tax. So I think Mr. Uh, Yaqub uh, shall have graciously said, uh, even uh, uh, the, the spokesperson, the Yulah Mujahid, that uh, we desire Pakistan's to, they, they should have offered their cooperation. That yes, it is a matter of uh, uh, billions of uh, human, uh, including women, and including children, and businessmen. They should have offered cooperation. What cooperation uh, Kabul uh, can uh, can uh, can do with uh, with Islamabad to facilitate these people? I think, and they should have even asked that requested Pakistan to reconsider this decision. And it shall be made a place-wise. But unfortunately, they, they reacted. It shows uh, that they are not uh, they are not willing to accept their own people. They are not willing uh, to, uh, to to recognize uh, the, 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 the the services and the, the way the people of Pakistan, the various governments of Pakistan, hosted. Uh, the millions of people. So for me, their reaction was quite, uh, I think, uh, uh, it was beyond my expectations that uh, American Islamic leadership, uh, leadership will react uh, very undemocratically, very unconscious. Finally, Hassan, I'd like to understand, November the 1st is the deadline, you know, for the uh, uh, expatriation of all the illegally uh, present uh, aliens or immigrants. What if uh, these people do not comply? What do you foresee? <coughs> I think, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, I couldn't because there is a shell in your audio. Uh, I think the, 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 the look, uh, now the, the biggest challenge for me, uh, as I understand for, about these aliens uh, in Pakistan, you rightly said it, aliens. It's not only the Afghans. Um, uh, either, either these are Iranian, the Iraqis, the Sudanese, uh, the, the Bengalians, the Biharians, etc. Who say ever lived in Pakistan without having proper documents, uh, without having proper passports and visa? I think it is a, it is a challenge for the current caretaker administration uh, to, uh, to, to to implement this uh, But it doesn't mean that uh, uh, we will just track them and just. Uh, 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 very, very any of Pakistan definitely want to uh, to seek uh, cooperation uh, from, uh, the, from the from the from all the the, the, the host home countries of all the Indians, particularly the Afghans. But I, th I I I personally believe that this time the decisions uh, will be sustained. Uh, it will be implemented. It will be carried over without coming under pressure from any side, whether it is the Afghan side whether it is the international community, because it's the people of Pakistan who are suffering uh, uh, economically, uh, who are suffering on uh, security brand, uh, who are suffering, I think, on, the, on, the, on pressure on their infrastructure, etc. So I hope and I believe this time the decision will be, uh, will be taken as fine. All right. Thank you very much, Hassan Khan, expert in Afghan affairs. Hassan Khan joining us online and, of course, explaining to us 
his perspective as far as this important decision taken by the caretaker government to expose all uh, the illegal immigrants or illegal aliens that are present in Pakistan by the 1st of November. As you can see, we are flashing even the number of days that are left, 26 days are left for all these illegal aliens to comply with the decision that has been taken by our government. Let's come to our second segment and that concerns Israel and Palestine. Nothing new there as well. We have been highlighting the Palestinian issue since a very, very long time. We have been trying to uh, say what uh, needs to be said on this front many a times. I don't know whether it is going to the right ears, whether the information is being translated into some kind of an understanding of the actual situation of what Palestine is going through under the Israeli occupation. But we can continue to endeavor in that respect. And today is no exception. Over 1,000 Israeli settlers, ladies and gentlemen, forced their way into the Al-Aqsa Mosque complex in occupied East Jerusalem on Wednesday to mark the fifth day of the Jewish holiday of uh, Sukkot. Now, this uh, just the fact of them entering an area that is reserved for uh, uh, for people of uh, the Islamic faith, for the Palestinians, is an intrusion into their life. But this intrusion is nothing new. We've seen intrusion of the Israeli settlers. We've seen intrusion of the Israeli forces many a times. I mean, scores of times. We can't even count the number of times that this has happened in the past. We discuss uh, the whole uh, this new chapter in the form of uh, the settlers entering into the Jewish compound of Al-Aqsa Mosque. Uh, we've been joined by two guests. Let me introduce them to you one by one. My first guest in the studio is a dear friend of mine, the Shaji Dafer of the Embassy of Palestine, Excellency Nadir al-Turk. Thank you very much, brother, to have joined us here in the studios. Thank Our you, second guest is Hanin Harara. She's a Palestinian journalist, and she joins us online. Hanin, it's a pleasure to uh, be talking to you on this very important segment. Let's begin with you, Excellency Nadir al-Turk. These settlers, you know, uh, entering the Al-Aqsa uh, Mosque complex, which is a revered place for the Palestinians and for the Muslims. Not the first time, and will certainly the way things are going will be not the last time. Are the brutalities or this total, uh, you know, disrespect for the Palestinians reaching a new high with every passing day? Uh, Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum. First, thanks again for giving me the honor to be your guest. Actually, this is not only the, the, this is the honor of Palestinian because Aqsa Masjid is not for only for Palestinian. Mm. Aqsa Masjid is for all Muslim Ummah. Mm. For this dishonor and disrespect for all the Muslim Ummah, not only for us as a Palestinian. We are blessed to be the first line to defend Aqsa Masjid, but it is not owned for us, it is mm. owned by for all Muslim Ummah. This is first things. What is happening actually is daily happening. This is not the first time, not the last time, as long as the only the Muslim Ummah and all the um, all the uh, world and all the international community keep silence of this criminal actions. Uh, the Israelis actually try to repeat what happening in 1994. It was happening in Al Haram Al Ibrahimi in Hebron Al Khalil. In that before a few years that year. In 15 in Ramadan, in Fajr uh, prayer, uh, one of the Zionist settlers in Hebron came and attacked Palestinians during the Fajr prayer. He killed that day 29 Palestinians and injured 150 during the was praying, uh, praying for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, later on, the uh, prayers try to defend themselves and kill that settler, Zionism settler. And what was the reaction of the uh, government of Israel? They mm. control more than 70% of the Haram Ibrahimi and making as a temple for the Jew only. Mm. And even yesterday, not only they attack Aqsa, the yesterday they, clo they close Ibrahimi Masjid and not allowed Muslim to pray there at all. And many, t several times they're not allowed them to raise a them or keep it for in that mosque. So they try to repeat the same scenario because they face silence. No one try to defend uh, al Ham al-Ibrahimi in Hebron. So they try to repeat the same scenario by making same in Aqsa Masjid, by change Aqsa Masjid from Muslim mosque, Muslim holy place, to become a temple of Sulaiman and build and make it as a temple for the Jew only. As long as Muslim Ummah, as long as the uh, international community keeps silence, they will keep 
this scenario they keep their plan until it is become facts on the ground. So we need, need to go again back to the history. In 1930, the Jew make clashes in 19, actually 1929. It was a clashes between Palestinian and the Jew mm -hmm. before the establishment of Israel in Jerusalem. Uh, it was uh, clashes, we name it Thawrat al-Buraq, liberation of Buraq. You know the Buraq, it is, the it is one of the walls of Aqsa Masjid because they said this uh, wall, it is part of Sulaiman Temple. According to that, this is belong to the Jew, not for the Muslims. In 1930, uh, the League of Nations create a community, special international community, to find the facts about the ownership of that place. For whom? For Muslim or for Jew? In the end, they find, fa uh, they find that this place is only belong for the Muslim. Is the Jew don't have any right hmm. to, uh, to, to, uh, to ask for the ownership of that place, because they said this wall is part of Aqsa Masjid. According to that, it is only for Muslim, not for the Jew. So right now, they are not only, uh, not uh, only control the, that wall, which is changing the name of it to become the Welling Wall. Okay, they, ch they try to control Aqsa Masjid as a whole. Okay, so what are needed to have action on the ground to stop this plan and damage it before it become real on the ground. And the scenario that happened before in 1994 in Haram Ibrahimi, come again to be in Aqsa Masjid in Qibla Awwal for the Muslims. Hmm. So we need some action on the ground to stop and freeze all these plans by Israelis. All right. Action on the ground is needed. Uh, Hanin Harara, when you look at uh, the current situation as far as Palestine is concerned and also the fact that two uh, Palestinians have recently been killed by uh, the Israeli troops in the West Bank on, the, on Thursday, uh, in fact today, uh, how do you see which kind of action can be taken by the Palestinians or by other friendly countries that are in the region or by the Muslim world in general? How do you see that? Are you optimistic or not? Hanin, we can't hear you. Uh, 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 your voice has been muted. If you could just unmute your uh, uh, from your end so that we can uh, begin to hear you. All right. In okay. In the meantime, I'll go back to Nader. Nader al uh, You know, today also I like I was telling Hanin, and you said first of all, let's come to that. You said action is needed on the ground. What kind of action are you looking for? Is it an action by the Palestinians? Is it an action by uh, countries, uh, friendly countries uh, of uh, Palestine who are in the neighborhood? Is it an action by the uh, Muslim world? Is it an action by the United Nations? What are you looking towards? Actually, for the Palestinians, we are do what we are have what we need to do. Hmm. Since years, we are the first line to defend Aqsa Masjid. We defend Aqsa Masjid with, with our flesh and blood with our lives. So what we are need to do, it is doing on the ground by Palestinian people, Palestinian leadership. But actually we need support from Muslim Ummah, from Arab Ummah, from all the international community, from mm -hmm. all the love, the lovers of peace and supporters of peace and stability in our region. Mm. What is needed actually is to stop dealing with Israel as it is above the law. Mm. Okay? Israel as long as it is established in 1948 on our stolen homeland, okay, until now they are dealing as a criminals. They are uh, creating apartheid regime, apartheid system in Palestine, and try to transfer Palestinian control of our holy places. With and the only thing they are faced until now is silence. Hmm. Silence is not enough. Of course, condemn the uh, the action of the ground is not enough. What we are, I, well, I, was, I have a connection with my friends around the world. Many of them are foreigners. They told me and mentioned that, that we are th thinking about it. Why the Muslims in Europe not uh, creating, salah, uh, creating prayer in Jumu'ah or anywhere around the embassies of Israel to, f to raise their voice that they against their action against mm. uh, the holy places in mm. Palestine? Why? There is no uh, prayer around the uh, offices of United Nations to, to ask them to take their responsibilities, 
to stop the changes the facts of the God in Palestine by changing the holy places of Muslims to become a Jewish holy places. Why we can't see march in, uh, uh, everywhere in the world re requesting each one to take his responsibilities and stop Israel from their criminal uh, actions on the ground. Actually, if we are going back to Israelis in 1939, as example, it was a community, Belgian community, it is international. It was that the community was a royal community by the British. It said that going to give birth of Palestine, that was the first time, that is 1936, uh, 36 actually, not 1939, requesting the uh, establishing Israel only in small part of the land of Palestine. And the rest of the land become for Palestinian. And this was not the go become a truth on the ground. Hmm. Uh, they said that they're going to limit the immigration of the Jew to Palestinian territories, Palestinian land in 1936. And the Jew in that time was their, their reaction. They're bombing a ship holding Jewish uh, 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 people are uh, make immigration, illegal immigration to Palestine. To say to the British government, which are uh, uh, occupied Palestine at that time, that this is done by them, mm. not by the Jew, mm. but by the Zionism. So Zionism are actually uh, uh, using terror even against themselves to reach their uh, their plans to become a two on the ground. Exactly. So I mean, to which end? I mean, the, the, the question mark is to which end? Hanin Harar, I hope you can hear us now. Uh, Hanin, I'd like to understand, you know, uh, as Nader Atul ably pointed out, he said, of course, that uh, nobody is above the law. The Israelis include it. They need to be dealt as per the law. Zionism, he also mentioned, is now taking, uh, you know, new turns and new turns for the worst. When you look at the scores of Palestinians who've been killed just this year, where is this all going to end and what needs to be done? What kind of action should be done in order to at least stop what Israelis or Israel is doing uh, to the Palestinians, to the Palestinian land? Okay. Uh, uh, well, I'll start with uh, the situation. It is so uh, disappointed for um, the Muslim and the Arab, uh, unfortunately, because they are, have to uh, be more responsible and more committed to their uh, responsibility uh, to what's going on the uh, uh, Palestine, uh, particularly in the uh, Jerusalem. As your honor guests say, it is not a case of a Palestinian, it is a case of Muslims and Arab uh, at the first step. So uh, what is going on in Palestine today, uh, we have witnessed the killing of two young Palestinian men, Abdurrahman Faris and Hudifa Faris, who were shot and killed by Israeli occupation forces during a military raid in Tul Karim uh, this morning. Uh, unfortunately, this is uh, uh, not the first time, or even the last aggression against people in Palestine. Uh, this ongoing escalation and violence uh, against Palestinians started before the colonialism and apartheid uh, state began, killing people, arrested, uh, settlement, Judaization. This is uh, before even. Uh, the Nakba, which was in 1948. So Israeli settlers hold a provocative uh, march in Jerusalem's old city, marking now the sixth day of Jewish holiday, okay, uh, as uh, uh, what is called uh, Eid al Ursh. The previous days were, were such uh, catastrophic days that the old city of Jerusalem have been lived. Thousands of settlers enter the Holy Land to uh, make some uh, provocative uh, practices, such as dancing, uh, praying, uh, epic worship, uh, trumpet uh, blowing, raising the Israeli flag in Al-Aqsa Mosque. This is a, a continuous attack against all people who are not Jewish, unfortunately. The Jewish uh, worshiper worshippers spitting towards Christian and uh, churches in occupied, occupied East Jerusalem uh, today. And the Israeli Minister of National Security, Etmar ben Kfir, defends uh, the spitting and uh, isolating uh, um, of Christians in Jerusalem by uh, 
uh, by Jewish fantastic and Asian Jewish uh, Jewish tradition that must remain in place. So uh, this does not make sense. Um, yani, uh, we can we can uh, say that Israeli forces have forced and detained even elderly Muslim women trying to enter Al Aqsa Mosque uh, and occupy East Jerusalem. They are trying to empty the place of every non Jew. All right. Uh, but Hanin, in all of this, you know, you, uh, you have given a slight overview of what is happening. So has uh, Mr. Nadir al -Turk. What do you uh, see? Whose role becomes more important? Is it the international organizations? Is it the important countries in the West? Is it uh, other important Muslim countries? Who can, uh, uh, you know, pressurize or uh, make uh, Israel no, understand this is, something. This is disappointing because we. This is, uh, uh, Yani, uh, uh, the world and the international community and the human rights uh, organization deal with uh, uh, Palestine, Palestine case um, uh, as not much as uh, possible because this, the the, the uh, Russian Ukraine war and. Uh, even Azerbaijan, uh, even uh, um, we, we could say the international crisis uh, take um, serious uh, the, uh, a series of action by the uh, international human rights organization. But when we talk about the Palestine, it is not. The international community who must commit to carrying out of its duty are not. So we cannot call even uh, 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 them to, uh, to take much responsibility. We have to fight. We have to fight because as a Muslims, as a Palestinian, we ha we, we here fight by the name of Muslims. Uh, so, so they have to be response. They have to raise their voice and they have to raise their hands and fight by the name of Allah because we have to protect our uh, religion and our uh, nationalities as Muslims and as Arab. So the international law and the international community is the human rights and even all those organizations that doesn't make sense when you come here to Palestine and see by your eyes and witness what's going on here and live with these escalations and assaults and uh, aggressions. Of course, one which, cannot which live under the, the escalation and the current situation that the Palestinians are, you know, going through. It's, it's torture every day. It's torture every day for years and years, for decades and decades, and to no end. Thank you so very much, Hanin Hanara, to have joined us and to have uh, discussed uh, this uh, current situation, the escalation of the situation. This is a constant escalation as far as the situation is concerned. Finally, uh, Excellency Nazar al-Turk, when it comes to... Uh, what we are seeing in this year alone. I mean, let's forget 2022, 2021, and everything that has been going uh, as far as violence or uh, uh, barbarities against the Palestinians, against the Palestinian land. Just in 2023, there have been scores of incidents that have proven that the Israelis are not going to stop with the ultra-nationalist government that is present, uh, with the, their own issues, internal issues that they are trying to portray through violence towards the Palestinians, so that the you know the the whole uh, context of the uh, Israelis also changes and it focus uh, our attention changes. Where do you see all of this going in the next year? Uh, by the end of this year, what needs to be done in your point of view? And is there still any prospect for peace? Actually, I'm optimi optimistic. We said in Arabic that the most darkest. The time before the dawn, it is the, it is the, the, the most darkest uh, hours, it is the, uh, the hours before the dawn. Mm. So the dawn is going to be, Fajr going to be very soon, inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, this is first. Second, I need to mention one thing, it is according to my sister Hanin's uh, mention, that yesterday some Jew was arrested for by the Israeli police. I, do, I think they actually, they have you know, circle doors, they are going from mm. the other gate, that because they are split on the faces of Christians are in, 
uh, are in Jerusalem going mm. to pray in the Holy uh, Church there. Mm. So Israel, it is apartheid system, not against Muslim only. Mm. It is even against Christians. Of course. So according to that, the question for all Christians around the world, Jesus is Palestinian. Mm. So if you are defend, if you are you are believe that Jesus was killed mm. by the Jew, mm. how become that you are forgetting the victim and supporting the killer? Mm. Okay, the Jew kill your messenger of Allah, and you are supporting them against the people who are protect the, uh, the brother and the grandson of Jesus. You are protect uh, protect the killer against them, mm. the, uh, the victim again like Jesus. So what you are the question for them? Stop. Please going to the roots of your religion, going back to the principle of your religion, and support the right cause, so being in the right place of history by supporting the right side, by supporting Palestinian, not supporting the killer of your own messenger. This is first. Mm. Second, uh, what is we are needed to be done? I, f I, I hear a, a story from one of African friends that as well as Israelis community go to explore, explore areas and known areas in middle of Africa. They found a young, uh, a young child, very uh, young child, and asked him, he was almost worth nothing, okay, and they are asking the translator to translate to him, what is your dream? Hmm. He said, my dream is become shaheed in Aqsa Masjid. Hmm. Then the Russian in their report, Israel in danger. Mm. Israelis will never feel secure, whatever they happen, and whatever they are getting support mm. from American, mm. British, of any country, mm. they will never feel secure in Palestine, because Palestine is for Palestinians, not for them. Mm. They will never feel secure, and as long as they create a problem, they keep deal as a criminal, they are deal as a apartheid system, mm. they will never feel secure. I to feel secure, I, I agree you need to you. go for for peace, hmm. esta accepting, establishing a Palestinian independent state on the land of Palestine with, uh, with uh, Al Quds as it, uh, Jerusalem as it is capital, hmm. with Aqsa Mosque going to be free for all Muslim Amr came and pray there. This is the only solution. Hmm. Any other solution, the Israelis will not feel secure. And it will not ever. work. It will not work. I okay. mean, this is the only this solution. This is the second thing. Okay. Third, third hmm. thing, third things. what are needed to be creating in the, in the ground. As I mentioned, if thousand person, as my friends in Europe mentioned to me, if in each embassy of Israel anywhere in the world, mm. facing every day 1,000 person raising the flag of Palestine, they will know they, are do, w they will feel in danger and they're going to be under pressure to create peace and accept peace. So they need okay. to be, they need so to be global need to movement. This is our system. duty, mm. this is the Muslim Umar duty, this is the Christian people duty to, mm. be, to support Palestine by even raise the, the flag of Palestine in front of all embassies of USA, British, and Israelis everywhere in the world. So this I is the only thing is, is required. I, I we don't I need anything. We okay. need peaceful procedure on the ground. So Dada Radu, let's hope this message gets across and that we see all of these processions happening in the days and the weeks to come so that uh, Israel comes under pressure. Thank you very much, Dada Radu, very much. to have joined us, to have come all the way. And it's and a very, it's, a, it's a, our honor to have you here and to have your point of view. It is my honor always to mm. have uh, the opportunity to speak my brother and sister Pakistani people and uh, throughout your uh, honorable channel. Palestinians in the bad, Pakistan's in the bad. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you very much. Let's come to our last three stories very, very quickly. The first is the World Teachers Day that is being celebrated in Pakistan as we see, in fact, all across Pakistan. It is annually held uh, in our country and in others as well on the 5th of October to celebrate teachers across the world. It celebrates the anniversary of the adoption of the 1966 ILO UNESCO recommendation concerning the status of teachers, which sets benchmarks regarding the rights and responsibilities of teachers and I think that is very important in the current context because teachers are the forebearers of the next generations. They are the ones who will make the next generations and if they uh, you know, abide by the right principles and give the right principles, teach the right principles and teach, uh, to the young ones, that is how a country and a society will become strong. Next, ladies and gentlemen, is a two uh, Nobel uh, Peace Prize, no, not Peace Prize, Nobel Prize is the first in chemistry, the second in literature. The let's come uh, with the first. Uh, the Nobel Prize in chemistry has been awarded to three scientists 
for exploring the nano world. I hope you understand what the nano world means. But this uh, was awarded on Wednesday to uh, Mungi G. Bawedi, Louis E. Bruce, and Alex E. A. Ikimov from B. Pioneers as far as the nano world is concerned. These new laureates discovered and development, uh, developed quantum dots, semiconductors made of particles squeezed so small that their electrons can barely have room to breathe. Now, uh, the difference in size between a quantum dot and a soccer ball is about the same as the difference between a soccer ball and the earth. So imagine the size of this uh, important discovery and of course the work that they have been doing. So congratulations to the three of them. Next, the Nobel Prize as far as literature is concerned. The Nobel Prize in literature has been awarded to 64-year-old Norwegian author John Sotse for his innovative plays and prose which uh, give a voice to the unsayable. I think that is also very important to give the voice to the unsayable and for that we congratulate Mr. Fosse to have uh, been awarded the Nobel Prize. Finally, 2023 is going to be the hottest year on record. This has been said uh, in, in, in a very, very important report and has been highlighted time and again by the United Nations, by countries such as Pakistan. The need to work collectively uh, to uh, alleviate the effects of climate change becomes even more paramount. COP28 is ar across the corner. Let's hope that we do the needful before it's way too late. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we come to an end of today's news. We'll see you inshallah tomorrow with new story segments that pertain to us, you and Pakistan. Allah Hafiz.